Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, Manor View Excavation begins, local police honored, and a Fort Meade unit you probably haven't heard of. These stories and more, but first this week, Fort Meade welcomed Chaplain Major General Donald Rutherford, Chief of Chaplains for the United States Army, as the guest speaker for this year's National Prayer Luncheon. He had a special message for the Fort Meade community. Phil Odierno, the 38th Chief of Staff of the Army, talks about trust and asks us to live it. He calls it the bedrock of our own profession. He tells us in his publication, Marching Orders, that many things may be difficult. One thing has to be constant, and that is trust. Trust between soldiers, trust between soldiers and leaders, trust between soldiers, their families, and our army, and a trust between the army and the American people. Truly, without this, we have absolutely nothing. It's been a great honor to be with you all today, but this is the place where everything happens. NSA, Cyber Command, and Intelligence Commands are here. You're the ones who really give us the future, the ones who care for our soldiers who, who are there. You play a critical role in our national defense. So I pray that God may continue to be with you. May God bless you. For God and country, Army Strong. Stay tuned, we'll have more from the National Prayer Luncheon and the Chapel's Gospel Congregation at the end of the show. Meanwhile, Garrison Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein presented 12 Anne Arundel County police officers with certificates honoring their service during the December protests sparked by the Manning trial. The Director of Emergency Services was forced to reach out for assistance. Our, our partnership, uh, Pete, when your incident commander came into our command post and dropped anchor. Um, and we now know that was the right decision to make but it was all new ground for all of us. The mission went off without a hitch. It could not have gone more beautifully. And the best part about it is that we were not on the national news that evening. Incident Commander Anne Arundel County's Major Tom Wilson received a special commander's award for his leadership. We put together a, a planning group that probably had about uh, 12 or 13 of our commanders. And uh, uh, we sat down with your folks. We, we based it on intelligence. We based it on information that we had and we created an instant action plan for the, uh, for the day of this event. Um, what we had available to us was we had intelligence folks, we had folks assigned to uh, almost in a patrol aspect, uh, standing by on, the, on Route 175, and we also had a, a civil disturbance team available. We had a, a large civil disturbance team that was uh, housed probably a half mile away just in case something got out of control. And if it did get out of control, then we could utilize the civil disturbance team to come in and be part of a reactionary team with, uh, with your forces over at Fort Meade. In another story of partnership, I wonder how many people in the audience have heard of the 32nd Civil Response Team. Well, they're based at Fort Meade, and from their title, they assist civilian authorities in certain situations. We're right here on Fort Meade. We're the 32nd Civil Support Team. We work under the auspices of uh, the Governor of Maryland and the TAG or the Adjutant General from Maryland. We respond anywhere in the state within three hours when it concerns weapons of mass destruction, suburban type agents or substances, and terrorism. On this particular day, the Fort Meade Fire Department teamed up with the 32nd for required hazmat training. Your actual, your objective is the room to the left of those two. Today is, uh, is getting better familiar with our, our fellow first responders uh, right here on post. We've worked with Fort Meade Fire Department before. Uh, this just keeps us uh, sharp, keeps us ready, and also helps us develop a better relationship uh, as we approach different types of problems down the road. It wouldn't be Mead Week without some construction news to report. Due to the installation of light poles at Mullins and Broadfoot Fields, there will be several closures. Mullins Field will be closed Monday, April 16th through Friday the 20th. York Avenue will be closed on the 16th for the operation of a crane. Contact DFMWR if you have any questions. Elsewhere, the excavation of methane generating buried trash at the Manor View dump site started this week. As of yesterday, nearly 600 tons of the approximately 12,000 tons of buried trash have been safely removed and transported to an off-post approved landfill. The project is expected to be completed in May when the site restoration takes place. If you have any questions, contact the Environmental Office at 301-677-9854. One final note, you may recognize the name Oskar Schindler, a German industrialist credited with saving more than 1,100 Jewish lives during the Holocaust. One of those he saved, Mrs. Helena Silber, is the guest speaker at Fort Meade's Holocaust Remembrance Day next month. Silber was number 16 on Schindler's list. She became orphaned when her parents and two siblings were taken to the Belzec death camp. In 1943, she was selected to work in Schindler's factory where she worked until liberation. 
If you want to hear more of her story, Fort Meade's observance is scheduled for Thursday, April 19th at 1130 in the McGill Training Center. For more information, contact the EEO office at 301-677-6687. And finally, we close this week's edition with more from this year's National Prayer Luncheon and the Fort Meade Gospel Congregation. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade week. Happy